Well, welcome back to Open to Truth, a podcast all about exploring big ideas and discovering truth together. My name's Clint. Hey, I'm Tony. Welcome back. And today we're going to talk about the hero's journey. Yeah. Fascinating. I will just say off the bat, I am acquainted with the hero's journey as an idea, but I still feel like I have a lot to learn. So I'm kind of hoping through the course of conversation, we can marry my understanding with your understanding, see where the overlap is and maybe try to make sense of this because there's something really interesting going on. Totally. Yeah. And I want just kind of another disclaimer. We've given it before, but not a teaching podcast. Yep. We, we should are... just add that to the tagline. <laughs> podcast all about exploring big ideas, discovering truth together. It's not a teaching podcast. Okay. <laughs> and, this, and I mean that by I don't I am not presuming to be an expert in uh, folklorology or oh, whatever no, no. it is or mythology. But I've just found this thing interesting. You and I have talked about it here and there, but haven't had a full like yeah. systematic conversation like we're about to have. So I genuinely want to learn and yeah. and shore up my understanding here. And this won't be the last we touch on it, but okay. yeah, sure. So for someone who's never heard of the hero's journey, how do we want to start introducing this idea? Mm -hmm. I think, so I think the terminology itself originated it's with this guy, Joseph Campbell, or at least popularized, yeah. popularized, mm -hmm. And he's making the claim that the hero's journey is like the archetype of archetypes, mm -hmm. or sometimes it's called the mono myth. This is the story that this, humans are telling. This is the these motifs are the foundation for all narrative at all. Yes. Story. Right. It's like the most basic story you can tell that every other story, as complex as they can be, because we watch serial dramas on Netflix mm -hmm. that are in, infinitely complex with the character development and all of that. But underneath all of it seems to be the structure that is common to just about any story that you can find mm -hmm. anywhere in the Bible, in literature, in movie, in film. Um, and that's part of the reason why like, I find the Bible so compelling mm. is that it's one of the first iterations of these deeply held yeah stories um in recorded history so yeah so it's almost like a an, a narrative pattern that has been recognized and that you see playing out in various myth stories folklore mm -hmm. but that presumably going right back to when we were around a campfire at night right telling stories to each other that's what entertainment was in the evening you know and and Correct me if I'm wrong here. Isn't the idea even... I mean, maybe this is where like a character like Jordan Peterson is taking it to the next level, but mm. that we're telling these stories and this is emerging as a meta-narrative or a, a big archetype because we psychologically or spiritually are going through it ourselves. Like yes. human lives yeah. just are the playing out or, of a journey like this. At the very is least... That yeah, at the very least, your life is a story. You think about your life in story terms. I'm, I'm, I am somewhere, I'm going somewhere, aiming at something, and along the way I'm encountering obstacles, and I either overcome them or I don't, and I either arrive at the goal or not. What's and, the? Mm. But that's interesting, though. Is that that doesn't strike me as obvious that it would have to be that way, or that we think about our lives as a story? Yeah, I mean. Is it is it a does it follow necessarily from just being a conscious being? This is what I'm wondering. Yeah, because uh, like apes, a chimpanzee doesn't have the wherewithal to consider its life as a story. Yes. Right. Yeah, and I well, I wonder how much of that has to do with communication, actually, and language developing. Mm -hmm. Just going back to the, you know, around the fire thing. Sort of the most basic story we tell or have told is. We have this camp where yeah. you know about this. This is our home. Mm -hmm. And then there is what's beyond the camp. The light of the campfire. Yeah. yeah. And then there's everything that's dark outside what we know of the camp. Yes. And something that we do frequently is a bunch of guys. We go out on hunts and we go out into the unknown and we're going to encounter monsters out there. There's things you don't really that know what's going to happen out there. No. And the most exciting stories were those where they come back and... You wouldn't believe what happened on the way. There was a jaguar and it jumped on two of us and we fought it da, 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 and we came back and now we've got the meat and we can feed the community for several mm -hmm. days or whatever it is. Right. That's the most exciting story. The most boring story is 
uh, I went from A to B and then I was at B. You know, that's like a story. It's a really lame one. Mm -hmm. We are captivated and gripped by the drama of uh, frustration of a goal and then overcoming of that frustration. Yeah, man. So, so I have printed out for us um, a, a copy of the picture on the Wikipedia page great. of the hero's journey. Yeah. This is the little image. Uh, here it is. Yeah, show if you're can. watching on YouTube. In fact, we can probably just put the graphic up. We're going to put a graphic up. <laughs> Let's do um, that. And maybe even do a cool highlighting as we go around the circle. Yeah. But we're just going to refer to this. I'm sure there's other... I know there are. If you just go to Google Images, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of different language put to this. Diagrams. And different, um, yeah, terms for where you are at on the chart. But we'll kind of start... I think the basic outline is I'm starting an adventure a birth of sorts. I go through a period of death where mm -hmm. I come to the end of myself or mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of that deep challenge. Mm -hmm. And then maybe whether or not I overcome that mm -hmm. is a question. And then there's a return of the hero back to the known. So even on this chart, there's known and unknown. And you're in the unknown for most of it. That's where most of the journey is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as we go... I think it might be helpful just to point out w how this is playing out in like really famous. Yeah, please. Yeah, let's give some examples. Loved <laughs> pieces of literature. Stories and that art. you will know. Yeah. You know. So I don't know. There's a lot. There's, there's just so many. There's to your point about this. I mean, if he's right that this is this is the, the story. story, then you can almost point to anything. But what comes to my mind is Star Wars. Okay. Uh, particularly the original three, yep. focusing on Luke Skywalker. Apologies if you have not seen Star Wars, but you got to get around to that soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it follows, I mean, so if you're watching on YouTube, you're able to see uh, the the terms here and just kind of think it through to yourself. But if you're on audio, here, let me just run through, let me just give a brief overview. Of the whole quick. cycle. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll talk about it in the Star Wars terms. Okay. So the hero receives a call to adventure. He then is given, or she, is given supernatural aid. And then he uh, meets the, th the threshold where he's about to cross from the known to the unknown. Yep. And sometimes there's a guardian there. You kind of have to overcome like that. Like a first trial. Right. To see, are you really ready to mm -hmm. head off into the unknown? Yeah. Uh, and then you are mentored or helped throughout your first uh, goings on in the unknown. Mm -hmm. And there's challenges and temptations maybe to return to early or to not go on the full quest or adventure want to give up yeah and then there's this moment where uh according to this there's a death of sorts this is the moment where maybe you have to make a sacrifice um something's revealed to you mm -hmm. and then that starts to transform you i think at this point now wh so where's the real challenge being overcome on this i think it is right before the death oh right before the death or it is the death it's related to the death. That's where the challenge mm -hmm. is overcome. And then there's this finding of yourself, understanding your purpose, being equipped to return home for the good of the community and equipped with the goods that you gained along the way. Right. Ideally, you have ventured into the unknown, found or grabbed hold of something that's valuable, mm -hmm. whether it be a lesson learned or material goods or whatever. Depends on the story. Then you head back and sort of share it with your original sending community. Right. So here's, um, let's just put it in the language of Star Wars. Please. So you have a Luke Skywalker. He often, the hero uh, is, not not all the time, but a lot of times, is in obscurity to start with. So he's on this desert planet of Tatooine. He's a nobody. He's a nobody, kind of poor farmer family. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, other events are happening in the galaxy where the droids come and there's this whole rebel alliance and empire, the battles going on. He's just down here. Something doing much thing. bigger than him. Going he starts on. to get caught up in this mm -hmm. um, saga. And there's this old wise figure, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who lives out in the desert. And he receives this call to adventure to take his rightful place as his father's heir. Luke does, not Obi. Right. Yeah. He's being encouraged by obi-wan to mm -hmm. take on that mantle of the hero to join the rebellion and fight against the empire who was responsible in part for killing your father okay supernatural aid here's your father's lightsaber 
that helps. Oh yeah. And Obi Wan teaches him the basics of the Force mm -hmm. to be able to like block blaster shots and everything. Yep. Threshold Guardian. I'm not sure what it would be right there. Uh, probably Han Solo to an extent. Mm -hmm. He's encountering this really rough figure. How do I handle that? Mm -hmm. um, he's being mentor challenged, and then there's this um, moment in the second film where he it's revealed to him that his father who thought had died is actually darth vader <gasps> one of the main you know enemies of the rebellion he's one of the key figures in the empire mm -hmm. and in that battle he's foolhardy he gets his hand lopped off that's a death mm -hmm, undergoes uh, and over the next film the final film in return of the jedi he's kind of he's becoming transformed he's fully taking on that mantle of i am a jedi mm -hmm. i'm gonna live out these values before i was more like a sith mm -hmm. <laughs> and being foolhardy and aggressive and now he's stepping into this um make a he makes amends and is able to you know vanquish the enemy in the end and as part of that whole process mm -hmm. he becomes something that he wasn't before like he he uh somehow steps into potential or who he could be by mm -hmm. like you said leaning into the jedi thing and yeah yeah it's a transformative process mm -hmm. yeah so there's other i mean and we could do this all all day for other different Marvel movies films you name it mm -hmm. lion king they're all there yeah lion king lion king's a pretty useful one too maybe just run through that as another example i mean simba is a little cub mm -hmm. in the pride lands that's to i mean it's so in your face it's the known it's the safe it's well lit kingdom yeah. like green. there's that moment where mufasa takes simba to the top of pride rock and everything the light touches is ours the whole thing. well what's that dark area well we don't go well, now that's the unknown Doesn't say anything about it yeah you know you, we don't know at all until just, simba yeah gets this um uh, urge to go explore it Cold and that's the threshold moment the threshold guardians are the hyenas yep that are lurking in that unknown mm -hmm. and the mentor helper is kind of like his is his dad and also zazu, zazu yeah. and rafiki they're each playing a role in that mm -hmm. eventually uh there's some see and and in the hero's journey there's these other archetypes playing out that uh, like the great father or the wise old man or mm -hmm. the hostile brothers almost like these characters that are common to mm -hmm dramas of all sorts yeah that are facilitating the narrative to get to this point yes so you would need to tell the hostile brother archetype story of brothers feuding with one another mm -hmm. to tell the story of how simba gets exiled scar mm -hmm. wants mufasa's role as king mm -hmm. and they've been battling ever since they were little cubs themselves yeah eventually simba gets framed for his father's murder is exiled finds uh timon and pumbaa they learn about hakuna matata mm -hmm. um it means no worries. Which would be the I think the temptation. Temptation is abandon responsibility, abandon the kingdom, chill in the jungle forever. Sloth. Eat yeah. grubs, do nothing. Yep. Yep. And then there's this revelation moment where he just figures, um, everyone's fine without me. I don't mm -hmm. need to return. I don't have a purpose. I don't have a calling. Well, Nala, his childhood girlfriend, uh, is wandering out beyond the Pride Lands for food and runs into Simba. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a matter of happenstance, and says, oh, like, Scar is now king, has run the kingdom into the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, you know, he's going through this death and rebirth process mm -hmm. where he's questioning himself. He doesn't know what he's supposed to do. Rafiki co comes along also and says, you know, encourages him to take up. Mufasa lives in you, you know. Mm -hmm. Go back and save the people. He does undergo this transformation moment where he sees his reflection in the pool of water and it kind of transforms into, into mufasa yeah, yeah realizing that he does have it within him it's very on the nose isn't it that it, movie <laughs> it is yeah how did i not see that as a kid you know just mm -hmm. it all made sense it's like yeah and there's atonement going on there too he comes to the end of himself and uh makes right mm -hmm. by going back to pride rock giving his mea culpa i was a foolhardy young cub and I am partially responsible to some degree for what happened to my dad. And and then, yeah, he returns and... Saves the kingdom. Saves the kingdom. Yeah. it's So it's... It appears in all kinds of movies and film, and I think this is part of why some of those franchises do so well, mm -hmm. like financially. For some reason, we want to see that story played out. 
Absolutely, in vivid man. detail. Over I would get, and over I would again. guess that every single person listening or watching would have Lion King in their top five Disney films. Right. And that's right. not an accident. Right. There's I'm, a reason think, it speaks I, well, to us. Well, at least that's what the argument is for considering this as the mono myth, the yep. archetype of archetypes. There's something just deeply compelling about it. And I think to bring it home to kind of like the topics that we typically discuss on this podcast mm-hmm. is this is what we are going through in life. You are on a hero's journey, mm-hmm. not just Simba and Luke Skywalker. We want to see that played out because we are playing it out. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I Yes. I, I can think of a few different ways of saying it so that Christians wouldn't get upset. But like the one of Joseph Campbell's books, The Hero mm-hmm. with a Thousand Faces, great book. Read it if you can. It's all about the hero's journey. I want to say, at least how I've come to think about it, something more like um, Christ is the archetypal hero mm-hmm. and wants to live it out through you in some way, cooperating with you in some way. Mm. Um, that like, I am not the hero with a thousand faces, but there is an eternal heroic spirit, let's say, mm. let's call that Christ, the spirit of the hero. Wow, wow. That's who fun. wants to cooperate with embodied humans um, to live heroically and that, that entails overcoming challenges, venturing into the unknown, grappling with oneself, becoming better than what you were before, mm-hmm. um, growing in your virtue. All of that is wrapped up in what it means to embody the hero. And if I just don't know what it would mean to be the body of Christ other than to oh, be wow. the body of Christ, like try to embody it. I don't know. That's how I've come to think about it anyway. No, that's really good. So, so what would be examples in your and my life Mm -hmm. of the hero journey playing out so are you saying that my entire life i'm on this hero journey and it's gonna follow this format or are we saying or our little seasons of my life like i think it's like a tv show i think it has potential to be both now some lives certainly are tragic right this is not a guaranteed narrative of how my life is gonna go there's a degree of cooperation involved this is the ideal yeah don't you think i mean some heroes get eaten by the dragon some mm-hmm. uh, uh, some lives do end tragically. Some heroes never accept the call to adventure. Screw that. I'm going to yeah. stay comfortable Hakuna Matata. So I don't want to say this is like the guaranteed pattern that yeah, will play good. out in everyone's life. Mm-hmm. And it, I'm open. Here's, again, how I think about it. Could be wrong. Tell me if I am. Or you think about it differently. I think there's potential for your whole life to be this cycle. Yeah. And for seasons of your life to be like mini cycles within the major cycle like seasons of your life might involve a call to it adv- think about a new career or something like that totally um yeah that's so good i think it's both i think well because even um just to tie it to lion king since that's that one's a little more manageable than star wars mm-hmm. um just one movie after all not a trilogy yep like we focus on simba because he's the main character and is aging throughout the movie but like mufasa is also a, a being yeah. that is somewhere yeah, somewhere on this story, right? Or I like, think so. He's playing the role of the great father archetype, mm-hmm. uh, the ideal incarnate. Yeah, uh, that you is judgmental and you never really can re- live up to live up to it. Yeah. It's like perfect, and so I, I I think what that's saying is I wonder I wonder. Well, I don't wonder. I know that now as as I watch that film as an adult, mm. I, I now have more of this feeling of identifying with both Simba and Mufasa. Yeah. When I was a kid, m- my dad, Steve, was Mufasa. Was Mufasa, right. Yes. And I was Simba. That's right. That's... But now as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm a little bit in between. I mean, I'm, I have children, so I yeah. do. I, but I'm not fully Mufasa yet. You know what it is to kind of sit in both roles. <laughs> I'm not fully Mufasa <laughs> yet. <laughs> I can't wait till you are. Yeah. yeah. But yes, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, like I want to play that role of the mentor or the helper to my children totally. when they're in this season of challenge, temptation. Yep. Yep. And I think, frankly, I think there are ways when uh, my lack of virtue has caused me to play the villain in someone else's life or mm. be the cause of their death, you know, uh, mm-hmm. whatever that death happens to look like. So... I like the... Uh, 
the imagery that Peterson uses of mm. the dragon of chaos. The dragon of chaos. Tia, Matt, it's exactly the same idea, man. <laughs> you got it. It's exactly you the same. It in idea. there. But um, so where is that on this? That's like the death and rebirth moment. Or you're saying it's right before then? That's what I, I was getting kind of confused. Yeah. I where guess, does the big challenge moment occur? I think it would be this section, challenges and temptations, and maybe right at the end of that, okay. resulting in the death and rebirth. Mm. I think okay. that's the real climax of the, I think, unless I'm wrong, and all of that happens, and then later in the cycle, after the transformation, mm. I think it's the encounter with the dragon that transforms. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, I mean, you can find, we could probably find different charts that get more at what you're saying, yeah. but I would tend to agree with you that... I view I view that as like this middle point pinnacle way, and there's a whole story to tell on your way home from defeating yeah. the dragon. You're not done yet, right? 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 Um, so if you've never heard any of this before, I'm sure it's very confusing. The first time I started sort of reading this and listening to this kind of thing, it I I thought I was only picking up about five percent of what was being put down. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is one of those things you got to spend some time with. At a minimum, I would say this. Begin to watch for these patterns in various stories that mm -hmm. you tell yourself, that other people tell you, or media, film, shows, whatever. Start to look for a death and rebirth pattern, because you'll see that mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, call to adventure, start to pay attention to that, and then start to notice it in your own life as well. And you, these puzzle pieces will start to come together. Now, I still don't claim to fully have my hands around this at no, all. No. Not no. at all, but... Um, I'd like to know. One, one other thing I've learned from this is the idea of the dragon of chaos being, and chaos, I we can call that the unknown. Yeah. Um, and it's disturbing the kingdom in some way. You're sent to go conquer it. And like maybe for me, that's my dissertation. Yeah. I've got to get that done and slay this beast. Mm -hmm. And that's part of my mini hero's journey in this season yes. of life. And what I really found fascinating the imagery that Peterson used to tease us out is the thing that you want most mm -hmm. is guarded or is in the area that you least want to go. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a, a true courageous hero isn't foolhardy. He doesn't want to go battle a dragon. Nobody wants, nobody should want to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's too brazen. But, yeah. but the, the chalice or the Holy Grail or the emerald, the um, in Lord of the Rings, the Ark and Stone, yep. is underneath, is on the piles of gold that Smog is guarded guarding. by the dragon. Yeah, and that's that's a, such a fascinating image for what challenge is really like in our lives. Yep, like the thing I want most is right in the same spot as the deepest challenge. Yes, that's such an important that, idea. That is you know? really really like, interesting. Uh, I w if I want to be really strong and fit, that is located precisely in moments of pain, pain in and discipline and working out, and and potentially feeling weak in that moment, mm -hmm. <laughs> paradoxically. Or the great good of accomplishment of finishing my PhD and having this product of a dissertation that I'm proud of mm -hmm. is only accessible through the difficult door of discipline of getting up early, and I'm going to spend hours of my day i'm sacrificing that time mm -hmm. uh like deep in thought and writing and everything yeah uh, and whatever goal that you have i find that to be a, a really helpful and wise thing to consider mm -hmm. that just so you know that nothing comes on the cheap what you most want will be found where you least want to look mm. yeah yeah that's yeah that's fascinating and 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 the fact that so th there's that that's just an idea that you said right yeah. that's a piece of philosophy mm -hmm. that we can wonder about but hey there's a lot of evidence for why is it the case that all these stories are written that way yeah why is the arkenstone why is it always by the dragon you know <laughs> cuz it is you know it's yeah. um not everything's like the dead sea scrolls mm -hmm. where they just were found in some cave i mean may, that happens sometimes yeah but the the stories ensconced in our literature that have stood the test of time and that have widespread appeal all function this way. Yep. The what is most valuable will be found behind a challenge of some kind. Right. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm And so as far as giving an account for why things are this way, narratively, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know, is the claim that there is some 
metaphysical underpinning to this, or this is how stories and storytelling has happened to evolve because this is the way we and our cultures have happened to evolve. This is the story we really like to tell because it propels culture forward in some way. Homo sapiens. Homo like sapiens, yeah. Human beings. And if we were to encounter another alien species, they would not be doing... I'm wondering if there's something to... Like, is this a... That's interesting, man. How yeah. pragmatic is this story? Is this, this is a helpful story to be telling? Does it propel things forward um, when we soak our culture in this story? Because... We don't want to say that the writers of Lion King, I don't think this is what you're saying, that the writers of Lion King had this chart out and were like, I mean, maybe they did because maybe Campbell had popularized it by I think that was... Okay, maybe that's why it's so on the nose. Yeah. Maybe not Lion King. But go back however far George, you want. George Lucas, the uh, the author, the director of Star Wars, mm -hmm. um, had written the first draft of A New Hope and then uh, read Joseph Campbell's book and he felt like his skin, he felt eerie. Yeah. He's like, oh my gosh, I did not mean to do this, but, but he my has story done it. perfectly maps There's onto these story. classic motifs. Right. So now, that, obviously, that's the point in his mind, make. he was thinking through these story beats because of all the different literature that he had encountered and these ideas are springing forth. But That's your... kind of what I wonder. Is it like how when I think of new songs to write, mm -hmm. I'm operating within a Western musical mode because that's the music I've heard my whole life. It involves a 12-step scale, and so when I write music, I'm going to write within that 12-step 12 12 scale. So that's all I know. That's what music is to me. But back to your... I think we were right earlier with, mm -hmm. with your discussion of the caveman and the fire and going out to slay the mammoth out mm -hmm. in the unknown, mm -hmm. or just that precept of what you want most is where you least want to go. That's just... And this is where we get into this weird discussion of what is truth, but it's true in the sense of... That's just it is what happens when you observe the human story and what it took to survive. Mm -hmm. This played out. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. This is what it took. Yeah. And now we're retelling that story with cool characters like Thor and Iron Man, and we're adding different supernatural powers. So even the even the um, yep. shamans of yesteryear were embellishing the tale of the hunt mm -hmm. with spirit guides and sure. all sorts of stuff. You know, like we should only go and the the sign of the wolf is in the stars mm -hmm. and they're just building on more and more to this rubric of uh the call to adventure we need something mm -hmm. uh be go through training to go out and do it be disciplined make a sacrifice become vulnerable get the great good and make it back and save us yeah that's the story, that's the of, story. of survival that's yeah <laughs> yeah uh, no, right yeah that's yeah and it's a really compelling story because i want to survive yeah well that's, that's what, i find it really existentially valuable yes this story it's <laughs> i i wonder if that's part of why it, you know these films and movies and stuff sell so well there's something inspirational about living this story vicariously through someone on a screen it's like when i'm watching iron man i kind of am tony stark for those that hour and a half he's the main character mm -hmm. i have totally i'm not self-aware during those moments really i'm not thinking about myself my own story my own drama mm -hmm. i am sort of putting myself in the shoes of tony stark and feeling what it lives feels like to live oh, the hero's journey yeah yeah for an hour and a half with all the attendant emotions mm -hmm. and hopefully at least on an unconscious level i'm learning something there about what is heroic what is villainous what is good what is evil what happens when you lie cheat and steal what happens when you sacrifice and are courageous like all of that is being absorbed um mm -hmm. and hopefully then <laughs> used in my life somehow and I, oh i mean we could keep mm. going but i'll try to land the plan here yeah that uh, i've also watched uh, movies and had experiences where i felt like it was a bad story yeah why is it bad yep well because <laughs> they did something weird with the formula yeah yeah like oh what's an example let's say i'm watching james bond mm -hmm. and then like right before he goes to deliver the hope diamond or whatever he retrieved back to mi6 headquarters he just gets sh sniped in the head oh this yeah oh, you know like that it's like a sneeze that didn't come right it's like <laughs> yeah that's not how it's supposed to be yeah so it's an ideal version of these different things and so now, tragedies yeah. do exist they do sell movies that are just that's going to make you cry that's just a sad one um the tragedy though yeah i wonder how you i don't know enough about it but 
maybe it's something like it's in that moment of the dragon of chaos that failure occurs yeah well that's what's so i think frustrating about watching a tragedy is there's this deep sense of that's not how it's supposed to go mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, that's not how the story's supposed to end you know i just feel that deeply yeah and maybe it's just i've been conditioned with hero's journey my whole life but or I'm thinking of uh, Harry Potter, mm -hmm. which has, I mean, obviously taken the globe by storm. Yes. It's made J.K. Rowling the richest woman alive, I think. Yep. Now Melinda Gates has it, I think. But <laughs> Okay, yeah, through. after the divorce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Shouldn't chuckle about their divorce. Sorry about that. But. Bill. So that that's a, that's a really interesting one where if you know the end of that story, Harry... In order to kill Voldemort, you have to kill different shards of his soul, these horcruxes, mm -hmm. and he's put them in different objects. But then you come to find out, oh, Harry, oh my goodness, is the final horcrux. The final horcrux. So in a way, like she did something so clever with that of he himself is part of the Dragon of Chaos. Yeah. So the culmination of his hero's journey is I need to lay down my life. Yeah. But she included this other mechanic where he can like come back to Resurrect. life. and. Yeah, go back to the return. Yeah. Part of the journey. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one final comment. Sorry. No, don't apologize. That you might, be, you might be thinking, oh, it's so nice for you guys. Like, you can just pontificate about your whole life as a hero's journey. Like, things must be going pretty well for you. Like, this is a, mine is a day-by-day -day struggle. Yeah. I'm constantly in challenges <laughs> and temptations. I, <laughs> there are some days when I have thought of my, just one calendar day. As, as a, the hero's as journey. As a hero's journey. That's My bed saying. is the known. Yeah. Maybe you're there right now and mm -hmm. your life is tough. You're taking it day by day. Mm -hmm. What's your dragon of chaos today? Oh, that's good. That'll that, preach. That's good. <laughs> that you need to vanquish. Yeah. And what do you need to do to be equipped to do that this morning? You yeah. know, what's your threshold guardian, the alarm clock? I don't know. Yeah. No, Honestly. but really. But really. And all these different temptations are going to come to, well, I could look at social media in another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or, boy, I don't feel like working out. Mm -hmm. Or all, all throughout this, you know. Yep. And by the end, isn't it so nice? When, when you have a really good day, doesn't it kind of feel like you have it, done a journey of the hero? When you live it right. Yeah. When you do the things you know you should do. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a good day. That's a good day. That's a good day. And I, I have found it genuinely helpful to think to use these archetypes and the story beats of the hero's journey in just my day-to-day -day living. Yeah. And then if you have the luxury, use that then to map out your a week mm -hmm. and a month and a year and a five-year plan and, and yeah. self self-author. Some of it I definitely, like I didn't learn this language until a couple of years ago, the mm -hmm. hero's journey and everything, but I was still under the sway of its pull like in my life. I think about when I was 18, I don't have a better way to describe what I felt other than the call to adventure. Mm -hmm. So I hopped on a plane, went after the girl, and went to the U.S. and yeah, totally, man. You yeah, were on this. I was, went for it. So I've thought through. Your dad might be a mentor at that helper stage. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he played a pretty big role for mm -hmm. me. Threshold guardians, maybe my in-laws. Went back when we were dating. <laughs> I don't what know. was your supernatural <laughs> aid? <laughs> supernatural aid. Ah, uh, you know. Well, okay. Yeah. You asked. I'm just immediately what came to mind. I was really blessed with generosity from people mm. like people who felt called by God to give me a car or give me 500 bucks or whatever it happened to be. Yeah. I, I felt like I was supernaturally kept afloat while you were an immigrant here. Yes. Yeah. While I was a poor Without status, jobless yeah. statusless immigrant. I was never illegal just for right, the record. Yeah. I did there it the right way. There were funny little pathways yeah, that yeah. I had to take, but yeah. always legal. <laughs> always legal. <laughs> well, let's, yeah. I guess we kind of cut it there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, that's a little hors d'oeuvre, a little appetizer for you. A lot to dive into more. Yeah, I'd pick up the it's the Hero of a Thousand hero Faces. Hero with a Thousand Faces, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's an audio version out there. It's probably actually all on YouTube, audio version yeah. too. Just take a deep dive, The Hero's Journey. Just Google it. Go Heck to the yeah. Wikipedia page. I mean, Wikipedia is... It's not bad. You can spend a while on there. <laughs> you don't have to absolutely trust everything it says, but yeah, yeah. food for thought. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening uh, to another episode of Open to Truth. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach us at mailbag at openthetruth.com. Uh, we also write each week a blog that three to four minutes goes directly to your inbox. You can sign up for that on our website by going to openthetruth.com slash subscribe. And stay curious. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Not a teaching podcast.